Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so this is work with my advisor, Jean-Jacques Slotin, and my culture and film. This is an albatross. It's the largest bird on the planet by wingspan, about three meters, uh, 10 kilos, and it flies 1,000 kilometers a day, all weather. And the worse the weather, the better. Let me tell you a few things about, about uh, nice things about the albatross. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see South Africa. On the right-hand side, this is Australia. And in yellow, you have a track of an albatross. It's 5,000 kilometers long, and it's been done in five days. Now, what's really amazing about it is that how easily it is for albatrosses to fly. This graph is about the heartbeat of an albatross as it goes along its, its life. You can see that an albatross at rest has a heartbeat of about 70 to 80 uh, beats per minute. Now, if the albatross walks or swims, it goes up to about 200. But when the albatross flies, it's down back to about uh, 80 beats per minute. So for the albatross, it's nearly as easy to fly as it is to just hang out on the nest. And so as an engineer, I want to be able to build an albat uh, robotic albatross. And to do that, we need to understand how uh, it can fly for so long with so little energy. And now the secret behind that is that the Albatross is a wind-powered system. In fact, it's a flying sailboat. So if you look at a sailboat, the sailboat has two elements that are important. One is the, the sail that slows down the wind, and the other one is the keel that uh, pushes back on the slow water uh, to compensate the force from the wind. If you look at an albatross, the albatross alternates between flying high in altitude where there is a lot of wind and plays the same role as the sail of a sailboat by slowing down the wind and then dives into the boundary layer, which is the layer of air about a meter above the water, which is not as fast as the layer in altitude and pushes back on that layer, just like the keel on a sailboat on the water. And if you like me, you like energetics, we can look at it in an energetics way. So you have the wind at some speed w. And then you have the ground or the water at no speed. And of course, those layers have kinetic energy to it. And what the sailboat does, it transfers momentum from the wind to the water. And by transferring this momentum from the wind to the water, because uh, energy is squared, the loss of kinetic energy from the fast medium, the wind, is larger than the gain of kinetic energy from the slow medium. And so energy is extracted for the system. And for the albatross, it's exactly the, same, exactly the same thing. There is a transfer of momentum from the wind in altitude down to the boundary layer and extraction of energy from the air to the albatross. And so now if you look at this video again, you can see that the albatross in this plays the role of a sail, dives into the water, kill, again into the wind, sail, again into the water, kill again. And now because we have this very tight analogy between albatross and sailboat, we can compare them quantitatively. And so the performance of, uh, of those systems, say the travel speed, is a product between the lift-to-drag ratio of the system and the wind speed. Now, an albatross is very streamlined, so it's very high performance, high lift-to-drag ratio, but it's quite uh, inefficient at extracting the wind speed. And the reason for that is because the boundary layer is about already 75% as fast as the wind. So it can only get 25% of the cake, which is the wind. Now, the sailboat, on the other hand, is quite bad at lift-to-drag ratio because there is a lot of drag coming from the hull, but it's very efficient at getting the whole magnitude of the wind speed because it has access to this very slow medium, which is the water. And now we thought, okay, how can we combine the high-performance aspects of both albatrosses and sailboats into one single system? And so this is our uh, proposition, the UNAV, a wind-powered, unmanned, nautical, air-water vehicle. So we start from what makes the sailboat efficient, which is a wing sail and a keel that can touch the water, which is the slow medium, and just add wings, just like combine the albatross and the, and the, and the sailboat. So you can think of uh, the system as a robotic albatross to which we have added a, a wing uh, sail and keel system, or you can think of it as a super efficient sailboat from which the hull was removed and uh, replaced by wings. And now because this system is high performance, low drag, and at the same time can interact with both the wind and the water, we gain on both terms. So we went ahead and computed how high performance this system could be. And the answer is that for a three meter span system, which would be three kilos, you can stay airborne in as little as, as, little as 2.8 meters per second, which is about five knots, which is very little wind. 
and travel at speed of 10 meters per second, which is about 35 kilometers an hour, which is much faster than uh, any sailboat you can think of. Uh, so this is, this is it. And if you wonder in some significant way how, how, uh, where can you travel, we completed that you can basically travel in five meters per second of wind, plus or minus 40, 45 degrees to cross wind at 10 meters per second or more. Now before we move on, let's just step back and talk a little bit about kind of what is the big uh, rule for, for designing the system. Well, the important physics is that the lift on the sail needs to be about the same as the lift on the keel. But because the density of water is 800, 800 times more than the density of air, the keel has to be 800 times smaller than the sail. And because also the sail has to be in basically um, the same size or smaller as the wings, we are left with a very small keel. So in this study, we went with a two by 10 centimeter keel, and it's already too large if you think of this balance of forces. And so now we are left with a system which is extremely uh, favorable in terms of energetics, but it's potentially hard with in, in terms of controls because you need to fly this three meter system about half a meter away above of the water, and you need to control this very small and yet very powerful kill system that can generate very large forces of lift into the water, generate a force that you, uh, that you desire whilst keeping the system uh, alive and stable. So we went ahead and wanted to uh, demonstrate that this was possible uh, with this very kind of fundamental maneuver. Take this airplane, fit it with a keel, fly at a low and constant and control height, fly low enough that the keel enters in contact with the water and then generate a set lift that you can control while keeping uh, your system alive. So this is the experimental system. You can see this uh, three and a half meter uh, uh, airplane. With this, which is fitted with sensors. So basically we sense the, the height of the system with, uh, with uh, ultrasound and otherwise it's uh, basic uh, avionics. And there is two tricks to make this system work. One is that because the keel is so strong because of the density of the water, we need to be able to really react fast to uh, the perturbation that happened to it. So we add uh, force sensing on the keel. You can see on the left of this. Of, of this. And this allows us, and we also add actuation in pitch on the keel, and this allows us basically to align with the, slow, the, with the flow and control how much force is generated by the keel. The second trick that we use is for height control. So if you look at traditional aircraft, they control height with elevator, elevator control. So if you want to go higher, you give an elevator down uh, uh, command, the plane pitches up, you have more force, and the plane starts going up. But while you start to go up, uh, the main wing, because the lift changes, you have a vortex that is shed, and this vortex goes and hits the tail. And when it hits the tail, you have perturbations that happen. And it's a quite a hard uh, process to model. So basically, we are uh, limited in bandwidth for the height control by this hard to model interaction between the main wing and the tail. Now, luckily for us, on those small scale airplanes, uh, the control for the flap, which is basically the camber of the main wing that you use to be able to fly at low or high speeds, uh, is the same as the control for the elevator. So we can combine the control of the elevator and the control of the flaps to use basically the flaps for high speed but low amplitude uh, controls, and the elevator for uh, low bandwidth but high amplitude control. And so with this, we went ahead, took our system, and went to test uh, onto, the, onto the river, the Charles River, which is just in front of MIT. So again, we want to prove that we are able to control this system to fly at a low height, control, get the kill in the water, survive, and generate a set forth with it. And that really is the, the building block of uh, the UNAV. So we simulate the sail by towing the airplane uh, with a boat. And so here you can see an autonomous flight. So the, we, there is a commanded height to the system. We ask the airplane to fly low enough so that the keel is deep into the water. And when the keel is deep in the water, we ask the system to generate a set lift force with the keel, and you can see uh, how the airplane is uh, reacting to that. And so in this, yeah, so you can see how the lift continues. Now, how can we really uh, see as just uh, spectators of, of this how the lift is generated? You can see that because the airplane is towed ahead and generates a slight force on the, with the keel, 
the manifestation of the, that the lift force on the keel is working well is that the airplane should kind of drift away from, from, the, from the boat. So now if I play the same movie again, you can say we land. And this landing spot is the equilibrium where it would like to be when there is no force on the keel. And then see how, uh, as we asked for the airplane to generate this, uh, this force on the keel, uh, the airplane shifts away from this initial equilibrium point. Now this distance between the landing spot and the new equilibrium port of the point of the airplane is the manifestation of the successful lift generation with the keel. So now to conclude, uh, so we looked at how the Albatross is a very efficient system to uh, fly on wind power for very long distances, but it can only utilize, utilize a small fraction of the actual available uh, energy in the wind. On the other hand, sailboats are very efficient at capturing the whole uh, magnitude of the wind speed, but they generate a lot of drag. So we propose the new nav, which combines both the albatross and the sailboat into a system that is to be a very uh, energy efficient and requires very little wind to fly at, at high speeds. Now the energetic is extremely favorable. We only need three meters or 2.8 meters per second of wind to fly this three and a half meter span glider at 10 meters per second. But the control is a priori challenging because you need to fly about half a meter above the surface and control the force on this very small yet very powerful kill. And so we showed that with force sensing in the kill and direct pitch touch actuation, as well as combining the flaps and the elevator for, uh, for precise height control, splitting the large amplitude low bandwidth on the elevator and the high bandwidth low amplitude onto the, the flaps, that this is, these are the building blocks that allow to, uh, to generate uh, a system that can actually perform the task. So with this, I'd like to thank uh, the Link Foundation for funding uh, part of this study, the MIT Laboratory for Autonomous Marine Sensing System, in particular, Michel Nowitzki, Michael Benjamin, and Stuart Craig, as well as the Turing Tank, and Vanu Bos, who was instrumental in the very early stage of that research. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. Uh, we have time for a few questions, maybe while the next author is setting up. Are there any questions? I don't, s oh, there is one. <laughs> What's the autonomy in terms of time of this kind of system? So of course this is a proof of concept, so this is not, uh, Autonomy, this doesn't have range autonomy at, at this stage, but the idea is that because it's wind powered, we can fly forever, and because the propulsion power comes from the wind, then you can use solar, power, solar panels on the wing to feed the avionics. So uh, the idea is to really make an infinite range system. Any other questions? If not, I have one. Oh, there is one. Maybe while. Well. Uh, what happens if there are waves at the white years? How will you handle waves? Yeah, that's a great question. So here we really kind of focused on, uh, you know, showing the physics. So when we, when we started with the concept, people, people told us, as soon as you put the kill in the water, the thing will stumble and we, you will lose everything. And so really what we, uh, what we wanted to prove here is that the physics is here and the basic control is here, that if you need to touch the water and if you control the kill, this is possible. Now, if you have waves, uh, one thing is that if you have waves, you also have a lot of wind, so maybe you don't even need to touch the water because just getting this 25% of the wind magnitude is enough. Uh, the other nice thing about this system, as opposed to like regular sailboats, is that you are uh, not strongly coupled to the water. You can basically choose when to touch the water. Maybe you can, you know, you want to generate an uh, average force and you can generate it maybe 10% of the time, you generate 10 times your average force, and then on average you get what you need. So you can look at the water surface and pick where you want to land. So I think a very excited vision and planning problem ahead. Uh, I don't, don't see any other questions. So let's thank the author, author again.